we about to get into general discussion. I don't really have a, a itinerary for today, but tomorrow, um, my guy Young Elder, and uh, I don't know how he want to do this, but I got a, I got a video and some clips for receipts I want to drop to get the people to understand how this slave narrative rolled out and how they was hiding behind the pale face. So I got a slave instructional video uh, on how to control the ones on the plantation. So it's a couple of things like the plantation was when they invaded Big Mama had farm Big Mama and Big Papa always had the farm. We go do our life, whatever we do, come back to Big Mama house um for holidays, family functions, major events. And a lot of the elders who didn't live in the city, we lived in Big Mama House. Well, they told us the, the slaves was being kept by the people that lived in the Big House. The Big House, take Mama name out of it. It's right there in our face. Remember, everything is to usurp, undermine, devalue, manipulate, manipulate to monopolize the rightful heirs to the land. So as long as you don't know you from the land, you can't assert your birthright to the land. And if there's only two ways in law where you can lose what's rightfully yours, there's one is by surrender. And the second one is by forfeiture. The only way you can forfeit is you have to claim, fail to claim at the appropriate time your rightful inheritance. And when the time closes, if you haven't claimed your rightful inheritance, then you forfeit. It's like uh, you got a basketball game and y'all got four players. You got to have five players to start the game and then right before game time, nobody shows up. So you have to forfeit the game because you don't have the five players to start. It's the same principle. The surrender is normally the byproduct of a war. It's when somebody beating you so bad and just like saying uncle, it's like tapping out. But in this particular situation, we had over 5,000 tribes easy. That's just in North America. We're not even talking about the ones that came from South America, the Tonga Islands. We're not talking about the one came from the Samoa Moa. We're not talking about the ones came from New Zealand. We now come the New Guinea. We're not talking about the ones that came from Australia to fight in the Gullah Wars. Because they came from fucking everywhere. That's why they think keep calling us Seminole. Those mixed ones. The mixed See, sem seminal root word is semi, which means half. And if you look in the three monotheistic religions, the ones they call Hebrews are referred to as Semites. That means that somewhere along the way they mix with something, they only part of the whole. That takes us back to the Prussian Mountains and the Kazarians, who were the mulatto offspring of the Blackamoors. And as a, and so they don't just throw their children out. They left them in char, charge of as accountants over the banks. So they illegitimate children has a legitimate profile in the family lineage of the royal hierarchy, which gives them the right to handle the money for the tutors, the black nobility. The unseen hand, the hidden hand, the black hand, um, the Amun priests, the ones who don't want to be seen by the public. So y'all don't rebel against them and beat their bitch asses and take your shit back. So they structure 
the system to make us believe it's about skin tone. When you go to the Black's Law Dictionary and you look up free white persons in law, not only do it tell you they're Moors, but it tell you they're not Caucasians. It's absolutely not a Caucasian, Norseman. It's not none of them. It's a black a Moor, a Moor. Oh, so it's, and we know the term Moor is a catch term. And the ones that came from Europe as Moors was called Moray, M-A-U-R-I, Moray. And it was a derogatory term, the same as nigga. But we want to have ethnic pride in some shit that don't got nothing to do with us. And so when they church doctrine, we became more Christian than they priests and preachers. We upheld their doctrines better than any of them ever did. And they can't understand how these motherfuckers live by that shit. Because we wrote that shit and we can't keep up. It's the morals versus the dogma dynamic. A morally upright people going to always try to maximize the moral compass. So moralism became a weaponized tool of war. That's why Bobby Hemi kept saying, fuck that moralism shit. All this moral this and moral that. The morality. It's a difference in immorality and uh, inhumanity. Right? If it's immoral, it's just something that outside of your tribal dynamic. But if it's inhumane, that means it's something that the human species should not be doing, like bloodletting rituals on children. Like we shouldn't be doing that. Um, sacrificing children with sabers, with the with the dagger, spilling their blood, slicing into their liver while they're living so that they can maximize the output of adrenalized blood because the biggest filter in the body is the liver. And if the liver is not filtering this shit out because it's a hole in it, it's all flesh into the liver, but the hole going to allow it to sink, seep out the liver. So we got all this stuff going on and we stuck between a compass of morality that's predicated up on inhumanity. And then they gave us legislated uh, moral structure in a law system. So as long as we follow in a legislative morality, we don't even know what the laws of nature says is moral because we follow in the mandates, dictates, ideologies of men. All of this stuff that we see around us is a carefully crafted construct of psychopathic racial personalities, but they ain't pale. That's what y'all not understanding. This is the hardest thing for me to digest and to reiterate is that they look like us, but they ain't us. And that shit hurt my feelings so bad that I didn't never want to tell y'all what was going on. Because if anybody feelings is hurt as bad as mine was, then the whole dynamic would be more damaging to the psyche. But the truth got to be told. We leave out of the Piscean age. Where everybody hid underwater. So everything we see in is slightly off center. And if you look from, um, and they got diagrams, you can pull them up on Google with no problem. The vision adjustment from underwater to the surface. There's a particular fish. They call him a spitting fish. The spitting fish is under the water. But he has adjusted his vision where he can shoot uh, a spittle of water and knock a bug off a branch that he's not supposed to be able to do that because of the offset of the vision. But for some reason, the spitting fish has allowed his psyche, his brain to adjust for the differences in the underwater viewing of what's not underwater so he can see it clearly enough to target in B and shoot that motherfucker with a ball of spit. It's the same principle coming from underwater in our thinking where we were being drowned with misinformation, um, misdirection, and all these David Copperfield type tricks. They told us that it was all a fiction. They called it a legal fiction. We didn't know what the fuck they was talking about because 
how can it be legal and fiction? That means that it's false, but it's legal. That means if you're following the law, you're following something that is misleading. The law that they set up is not the laws of nature. And if we don't go back to the laws of nature and live in harmony with the earth and the other beings on the earth, I don't give a fuck what your skin look like. I don't give a fuck what your hair texture is. You will not be here carrying the old paradigms waste product into the new earth. We it's just it's going to be incompatible. So we there's nothing wrong with people having self love pride in itself but to develop the superiority complex this is exactly how we got in this shit um, i keep telling y'all mama said the good had to suffer with the bad that mean the ones who didn't do the dirt they look just like the ones doing the dirt but they ain't the same and so and, and both of them gotta suffer because the ones who didn't do the dirt is going to be the ones able to follow the compass in the hero's journey to ascend to the mountaintop and be the goat on top of the hill looking out over the rest of the mountains. And the mountains mean governments. And it's 12 governments of the earth. The 12 governments of the earth is 12 matriarchal um, orders. And these 12 matriarchal orders fall under what we call the daughters of Isis. And um, Isis is the 13th seat, meaning that it's the grand matriarch's seat that governs over the daughters, the 12 daughters. So what Big Mama do sitting in the 13th seat is she wait for one of the 12 to say, hey, Big Mama, I got a problem. Who do we have that solves this kind of problem? So then Big Mama I sit there for a minute and say, okay, baby, I'ma send you um I'ma send you Malachi York because you need somebody to specialize in breaking the code of the oppression. And then I'ma send you um Elijah Muhammad because you need somebody that's gonna follow the culture no matter what religion he is, and he's gonna teach it to his his adherents. So when we looking at all these different people over the years that tried to change the condition and was unsuccessful, it wasn't that they was totally unsuccessful. It was that they did their part. You ain't going to never overcome an obstacle until you realize you got to take the first step. Once you take the fir first step, you activate the process. Once you activate the process, then you fall into the barrier of time. The size and magnitude of the change determines how long or how much time it takes to turn all of that shit around and make shit run the way it's supposed to run. So the, the critical dynamic in seeing what's going on now is not only have we took the first step, we almost, we at the finish line, tiptoeing across that motherfucker in everybody's face. And they keep acting like we're not even in the race. We at the finish line, right? So we're looking for the exit. The exit is clouded in the cloud of smoke. But it's here. Can't quite put my finger on it, but it's somewhere around here, right? <clears throat> Which takes me to this. My pops passed... 11 months after my mom. My pops passed on my little brother's birthday, October 27th. It's also my couple of my niece's birthdays, cousin. But my mama passed the year prior on my baby sister's birthday, which is November the 7th. My father's funeral, I think, was around the third or the fifth of November, but my mama funeral landed on my oldest brother's birthday. So in the middle of all this, my birthday fall. Now, my mom and pops been gone four and five years respectively. This year, at the end, I know there's something I need to find. 
this grief and returned on a whole nother level. So what I do, being the Scorpio I am, I try to keep the appearance of business as usual. And I deal with my conflicts, my grief, whatever it is I'm dealing with, right? And um, while I'm dealing with it, onlookers think it's business as usual with me. It's definitely not, not even close. This one was hardest because there's something here that we missing. It's close. I don't know if it's close as in um, geographically close. I don't know if it's close as in time-wise close. And I don't even know if it's close as in affectionately close. I got to find it. I'm looking. And I ain't finding shit. There got to be a, a trigger to set it into... Um, motion the grand finale that thing which closes all of this shit out and make them bring all that secret squirrel shit to the open while I'm looking for that I can't stop grief cause grief gonna grieve when it grieve you gonna feel that shit when you feel that shit however it come my goal is to not to abuse and misuse somebody while I'm going through a struggle because the worst thing that you can do is be going through a struggle internally nobody else don't know it and then you take it out on that person and then when you recover or come out of the state of grief right now you didn't say it or done something to somebody you really genuinely care about that's genuinely there for you but now you done fucked up to the point where apology can't fix this shit. That's why my first order of business when I'm dealing with internal self crisis is isolation. And what our problem is, a lot of us, men and women, be mad at somebody else and take that shit out on the motherfucker we care about. We do that shit and because we care about them, we felt, well, that's cool. They forgive me. You can't do that. It's not fair to the person you care about. And it ain't fair to yourself because you're going to need the person you care about on a different level. Right? When you recover, they ain't there because you then took out all of your anger with everybody else on your comfort. You can't beat your comfort. Like the enemy. You can't abuse the people you care about like they're the enemy. And we do this so easy. That's why I'm like fucked up because they act like we just start having relationships like in the 50s or something. Like this is some new shit to us. Men and women have never dated in the history of the world into the 50s. Now we got to figure out how to have a relationship. But my research, my observation to me is we making this shit hard because we being selfish, entitled, and self-centered, right? We making this shit hard. Relationships not supposed to be a struggle. The relationship is supposed to be the partner that you bear arms with to fight the struggle. You're not supposed to be in the struggle with the person you fighting life with. And we tend to do that, men and women, across the board. Men become domestically violent and turn a beautiful love affair into a hostage crisis disguised as the love affair. Women turn into naggers. And the reason they do that is because they don't feel like they're being heard. They don't feel like that you paying them no attention. But if I'm fighting a problem, I'm probably not paying you attention right now. And it probably don't got nothing to do 
with me having any malice towards you whatsoever or any feelings of neglect. It might be just that I'm dealing with a problem and I'm focused on it and I'm trying to keep the fronts up to keep you from dealing with the same problem I'm dealing with because now I'm dealing with it and my, now we got to resolve the matter fast because both of us can't be going through crises together. This is going to cause a trauma bond. But these new people don't feel bonded unless it's a trauma bond. This is a Dianetics contagion of aberration at its finest where the fucked up psyche is looking for another psyche to fuck up, right? Bad ideas are living organisms. Why you say that, Rod? What do you mean they're living organisms? They follow the same path of any other virus. They try to find a, 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 a source to feed on and grow. And then once they successfully feeding and growing, now they have to reproduce, replicate. They have to find another fertile mind to fuck up so that this fucked up shit can be spread like wildfire. And we take these things beyond the personal scope. If you know somebody, you don't know them in war the way you're going to know them in peace. You're not going to know the guy from the battlefield the same as you know him in the hood, right? Unless your hood a battlefield, because some of the hoods is battlefields. But what I mean by that is this: the when a person is at war, they not paying attention to what they would be paying attention to in a time of peace. The warrior. Fighting a war is not going to be the lover yet. It's not going to be the attentive one. Not going to coddle your needs because he at war. It don't mean they don't care. It just means that if they do get distracted at wartime, it could mean imminent doom. When you at war, you can't shift out of war mode until you see the peace flag. And the peace flag is the white flag. And these motherfuckers ain't way raising no white flags yet. Right? We go by totem poles and we go by war bonnets. When you see a bunch of chiefs riding around with all white war bonnets on, we in peace time. But for the foreign invaders who brought the law of the flag on our shores... And if you don't see no white flag, the war's still raging. I'm looking for the white flag. That motherfucker some goddamn where. And we got to find it and put it in the public domain. So that's an all hands on deck situation. It's going to be over a state building. It's going to be over a, a military um, installation somewhere. That white flag is flying right now. We don't even know where it's at. Because we, we so busy focusing on... Um, did my girl look at that nigga muscles when he was flexing? Or did her man look at that other chick ass? We fucking fighting a war. Who gives a fuck? We fighting a war. The hardest part for us to understand is we fighting a whole fucking war. This war didn't just start. This is a 500 year old protracted struggle. If you don't know that war evolves over time and take on many faces, and causes people to behave in a different manner than they would in a time of peace, you're going to be lost, right? And we know, because I didn't produce the receipts, that this is not just a physical war, but it's also a kind of war, and that the reason why Martin Luther King was uh, using the Gandhi nonviolent, the same reason Gandhi used it, the same reason that motherfucking... Um, um, Marcus Garvey built a whole fucking military and said, oh shit, we can't even fight. I did all this shit for nothing. This is a waiting game. This is a student's game to become a master. It's about education and erudition. It's about learning. 
It's about who's going to read the most books, who's going to apply the most discipline to overcome the psychological deficit of the Kali Yuga, the artificially induced Kali Yuga through a blood ritual. And when he realized that, his hands tied. Elijah Muhammad told his nation don't get no guns. Don't mean it. Don't mean some of them got no guns. Cause like me, I believe in fucking firearms. I believe as long as my enemy got a gun, I should have ten. That's how I feel. But all that regarded, we was fighting a war that had evolved beyond the blood that ran through the canals of Miami, the canals of Orlando, from. The blood that drenched the Mississippi that went into New Orleans to the Delta. All of that bloodshed culminates with the Civil War and the assassination or the sacrifice of Crispus Atticus by the invaders. I seen a couple of, uh, couple of lives in the last couple of days. And, it, um, what's my man? Asir. Duke of Tears lit that bitch up. He went in. I can see where his blind spot at, though. Then, uh, a girl named Amina Nicole be with Emrek on a receipt drop on the shattered screen. Y'all gotta get that. When I got out of it, when y'all cut, when y'all get done watching this, search on there for the, the, uh, broken phone dialogue from Amina Nicole. She went in, and I'm like, damn, she dropped all the receipts that I was dropping at the same time I was dropping them. I didn't even know we was moving that much in sync until I seen her doing her receipt review, and I was like, holy shit. And if I, I could have took her receipt description and everything she said, posted a receipt to it. That was fire, right? And um, But a seer duke of tears, he had to... It was a feathers versus feathers discourse, and he was explaining how they was fighting a proxy war. This going to come up tomorrow with Young Elder, and we're going to go into the whole proxy war and how do you fight a proxy war. This is what we've been doing. See, while we trying to remember who we is, and the Dirty Moors, Conquistadors, is trying to remember who they is, <clears throat> the bays versus the elves, feathers versus the feathers is righteous more versus dirty moors. This is how you know something ain't right. The country that they call Morocco today was founded in like the 40s. And they stole the flag that Noble Drew Ali brought for the Moorish Science Temple of America. What you mean, Rod? That's the Noble Drew Ali flag. Noble Drew Ali was flying that flag in 1913. Right? Wasn't no Morocco. Ain't no ancient Morocco. Morocco not even ancient. So how in the fuck you gonna get me to believe it's an ancient Morocco? Right? So, but it was called Al Maghrib, Northwest Africa. Now, they show us a map where Al Maghrib were written over Northwest Africa, and this is where the Spaniards sent the, um, the Moors, when they expelled them from Europe. This is not even hard, difficult information to find. But I knew when Noble Dry Lisa get a good Moorish education, he mean that I'm going to show you something. And if you follow these motherfuckers, you're going to find out some mind blowing shit. Right? And I find out that he went into what's called the Moorish Zionist Temple in New York to discover, right? What are they using as the means to oppress us at home? It doesn't make sense. They have to be doing something that we are not privy to. So they cat's paw. The cat's paw is the fall guy, the crash dummy, your coat sievers. The fall guy job is when the heat come, he supposed to take the heat. But pale face speak with forked tongue. He told us what the motherfuckers was doing because he put it on blackface. I'm a pale face, but I'm speaking for some motherfuckers with black faces. But the terminologies, black and white, is chess terms. 
Those who fall under the category of white are the European nobility that came over here to conquer the, uh, the natives of this land. The black on the chessboard are your stealth priests from this land, your old Mississippians, and your, um, um, what they call your South Pacific um, tribes coming from Mexico, Olmec, Aztec, Toltec, right? And then they just say that we just up and left, like when you study the Pueblo, they said it's just up and left one day. No, the fuck we didn't. We didn't just up and leave. Nigga, we went to war. And we had packed our families up and we was on our way to go fight the Gullah Wars of Florida. They told y'all we lived in teepees. Bullshit. We got castles that's been here for thousands of years that's still standing. And all they did was turn them into state buildings, mental institutions, and prisons and told you that there was none of that shit over here. That there was no royalty over here. They don't tell you that we, the old Mississippians had a navy. And our naval base was the Port of Norton Nola. Well, Port of New Orleans that the French end up taking. And it wasn't a war, a stronghold for war. At first, it was like when we brought goods from the islands and sent goods to the islands, it was our transport port. And we got trade. We was trading with Africans on the West Coast long before Columbus. We was trading with Asians on the West Coast long motherfucking before Columbus. And they having us thinking that we was all over here savage backwards, the same shit they tell us about Africa. Africa got a metropolis over there that's still standing that ain't never failed. And they got y'all thinking this is all new shit. This shit old as fuck. We go through cycles. At the end of the cycle, somebody comes along like me. Normally it's Big Mama, but this time she sent the baby boy because we needed to change the dynamic for the men. The men need to be seen properly supporting the women so that we can get the imposters out. So now, mama baby boy and big mama favorite baby boy, they say we're going to send him in, but we're going to hold him off until he get to be an older man. Wait till he get to become an elder, and then we are letting him evict every motherfucker on the land that don't belong here. Article 77 of the Iroquois Constitution said that the war chief has an absolute right to evict the imposters and invaders off the land by putting it in the public domain. Article 77 of the Iroquois Constellation, Constitution. Now, the thing about that is, is there's five treaty tribes. The rest are what you call non-treaty tribes. It got to be it's supposed to be one of the five. The only way that you can bypass that is if the war chief out of the five civilized tribes who inherit the right to close and evict the imposters doesn't perform the function due to the miseducation or due to the dereliction to duty. Either one, it don't matter. But when they show you that they don't know what to do, then... The next war chief that's actively alerting the people of the condition can close out the, um, can he can serve the notice. That's already been done. See, if you don't know your culture, you won't understand what's taking place behind the scenes. But if you understand your culture, you'll know the farce of what's going on in front of our face that they playing out in social media, the news networks, uh, all this shit, the whole entire internet, no matter where it's at, is owned by the U.S. military. I don't give a fuck if the Russians using it. I don't give a fuck if the Chinese using it. I don't give a fuck if North Korea, South Korea, West Korea. I don't give a fuck who using it. The military was a creation for espionage and intelligence by the military, military industrial complex. And they own the fucking internet. There is a switch that they can hit and eat, turn off the entirety of the internet. That go for your dark net, your Apple iPhones, all of that shit can be shut off by the U.S. military with one button. All they got to do is turn Hal off. Just because Hal not over here, right, don't mean they can't turn that motherfucker off from over here. It still falls under the jurisdictional domain of the military industrial complex. This was seized 
under Donald J by military intelligence for crimes against humanity because Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a treaty with beings that ain't from Earth to allow them to collect samples of humans. They don't got to bring them back. That's why they, he agreed to give them a million people close to him. It's 800,000. It was the actual original number. And it's no, if you Google every year, how many people come up missing, it's going to be roughly 800,000, right? But you got to remember, in that 800,000 is not included kidnapped children in the trial, child trafficking network that we call um, DHS. It's not counting none of the children, right, that's being bred in, in, in people's basement like dogs, right? It's not counting none of them. It's not counting. It's only counting the ones that they was given permission to take. They're still, look, they've discovered Wall Street is behind the laundering of $100 trillion in child trafficking. A hundred trillion dollars in money laundry. A hundred million dollar in false trade, proxy trades, which is actually money laundering cover up schemes to allow them to conceal the financial flow of their dirt. Wall Street was created to trade in slaves. Your birth certificate is traded on Wall Street as a secondary. It's traded primarily on what we call the international exchange, right? The national exchange or the Nas the North American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, is not the same as the international stock exchange, which trades an entirely different volume of currency. When you look at Wall Street, you could trade a dollar on Wall Street. But when you get to that international trading system, you are starting off in the billions, you starting off trade because you trade nations now. You got nations doing business with gross national product and gross domestic product. And they doing all of this trading in your face, behind your back. They doing it. They admit to doing it. They show you the numbers, but they not telling you what they really doing. Right. That's like if a dude count drug money, but you don't know your drug dealer and you helping him count money all day. You don't know you count drug money. You don't got no way of knowing. If you don't know he's a drug dealer, you have no way of knowing you count drug money. Now, let's just say he's also a casino owner. Now, you under the impression you count casino money, but all the time you count drug money. We've been counting money, traf uh, human trafficking money for them. We've been aiding and assisting them in their um, bookkeeping process by using the mortgage fraud cover-up, the um, interest fraud cover-up, the inflation fraud cover-up. All of that is to conceal the trading in the human capital of human children, the byproducts, and their body parts. You think when they say they trade pig bellies on the market, they're talking about oink oink pig. No. No. Pig is an acronym. Figure that out. Pig is an acronym. So they might be trading pig bellies or pork bellies, which is also another acronym. Right? All of those acronyms, you know them because they're spelt in capital letters. So like I write, I write in all caps. Everything is an acronym. It's a story inside of every word and inside of every story in that word, it relays a bigger message. This is all traceable, trackable, translatable based on how the psyche work. If you understand how the mind work, they can run all kind of bullshit on you. But as soon as you figure out how you process information and then you see how they laying it down, right? It's called mimics, mimics, right? M-E-M-I-C-S. And what that does is give you what they call micro bytes of data information, but they cover it up with a bunch of information. So it's one page 
in the encyclopedia you need, but you have to go through all of these volumes, A through Z, pick the book you want, then you got to pull that book out, then you got to go through that book, get to the page. That's how you're reading the acronyms. They're doing this on purpose because they don't believe that when somebody come along and tell y'all what's going on, y'all going to have waking up to the point where you can see clearly what's going on in front of your face that they're doing behind your back. They hide it in the open so that they can exempt themselves from any karmic debt to it because you agree to it when you accept it. When you go along and get along. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the postal trick. Y'all know the. Uh, Y'all know the postal trick right. The postal trick. Is to get you to get a mailbox. That's not at the post office. They want you to put the mailbox on your house. You're supposed to go to the post office. And pick your shit up from the post office from a P.O. box. But they tricked you. What you mean, Rod? Because in a law, a postal zone, 10 mile perimeter around a post box. It's a postal zone, jurisdictional era, area. Now, every post box gives them jurisdiction for 10 square miles. It's five of them on your street alone if it's five houses. So each one of them stretches out to give them such a radius of jurisdiction and they all overlapping. And this is why they don't listen to your complaints about jurisdiction when you go in a court because they don't want to tell you how they, how you gave them jurisdiction. Cause once they, once they tell you, look, you got a mailbox on your house, which gives us postal, postmaster general jurisdiction, postmaster general then allocates it to the Justice Department, who allocates it to the U.S. Marshal, who allocates it to the state police, who allocates it to the county sheriff, who allocates it to the city police officer, who allocates it to the beat cop. It's all the same shit. This is what they're doing to us. They, we are in a military occup occupation. Dr. Nitty Fuller told me, I called him on the phone, talked to him. He told me if you don't look at it like a warden in the prison, you will never understand what's going on. And that key right there almost made the dope bust me in the face when it popped open. Because now I understand Alex Jones' prison planet, what he's talking about on a whole nother level now. Because now I'm the warden. I'm looking at it from the warden's eyes. The warden knows some, know everything going on in the prison, even if you don't act on it. They allow a certain amount of shit to go on in the prison in order to keep control of the prisoner. They allow a certain amount of motherfuckers to speak up. Uh, and then when he get too big for his britches, they're going to set his ass down because he's starting to wake up too many inmates. The <clears throat> Emancipation Proclamation is the most deceptive term you ever heard in this system. Emancipation, it just means to, to be free to roam. It don't mean freedom. Um, the proclamation, no, emancipation means to transfer um, the property from one jurisdiction to another, right? And the declaration is somebody said it out their mouth or the proclamation. Somebody proclaimed it. They said it. Somebody said transfer the slaves from private jurisdiction to public domain so that the government has to seize all slaves in view. Because now the government has to keep track of what they call the trustees. You got to remember, the U.S. corporation is not our government. There's tribes all over this bitch that don't follow none of that shit. And we've been to war over the years from them attacking. 1974, 75, they went on to a reservation um, and had a shootout with 
reservation Indians, right? Now, they supposed to have jurisdiction, the FBI, to investigate criminal activity on a reservation. The only problem with that is somebody has to report criminal activity on the reservation. The problem with that is, is the people on the reservation don't fuck with you people like that. Who reporting the crime? It's an infiltrator in the house. Just how you know. The infiltrators at every level. The police are not supposed to respond to a crime unless they directly witness it or they are called and the person calling is either the victim or the person who directly witnessed it who's making a citizen's arrest. The police is not supposed to make the first arrest. The citizen that's making the complaint is, but they tricked you because the police is a slave catching force. All they need you to do is identify the slave that's belligerent to the meritorious manumission. Look that up. Meritorious manumission. Can somebody write that so I can print it? Meritorious manumission. Because that's the kind of slave that we classify under the jurisdiction of nationalism. Meritorious manumission slaves. Right? So, under meritorious manumission, we receive our trustee status to roam the plantation. Right? And they benefit from it through a system of taxation. In other words, they're charging us. They're charging us without a crime. They charging you tax. But they told you there is no taxation without representation. No taxation. Damn, I pent that motherfucker will stay. Okay, there we go. Meritorious manumission. This is the category of slave that mean that they the slave that can leave Mr. Charlie Plantation and go to Mr. Shackleford Plantation and won't nobody bother them in their transit. If somebody stop them, they got something that they call a free papers. We call it today identification. Driver's license, state ID, school ID, Right. Social security card, which is more of your banking information than it is your status information. <clears throat> when you get a nationality card in the back of that motherfucker, say you're a U.S. citizen. You can only be a U.S. citizen as if you're a straw man, period. I don't give a fuck who you is, because in order to be a citizen, you have to be tied to something called a nation or a national. The, the national can be a ship. But you got to have a flag. All, you gotta, all nations under the law of nations have to have a flag. And that's why I told y'all it's a white flag out here in one of these buildings. And I got to find that motherfucker. So if y'all see it, it's on a state building. It could be a prison. But they hide, it's hidden in plain sight. It's a white flag where the U.S. flag should be. And there's probably a POW MIA flag with it. Um, and uh, if there is a U.S. flag, it's going to be under it because they surrendered. We got to find this motherfucker. I don't know where it's at. Because under the law of the flag, we know we took over the Vatican. We know we took over Buckingham Palace. We know we took over military industrial complex. But now we need the evidence to show the people that the enemy is not only defeated, but defeated and surrendered any claims they had on our birthright, which is going to be in the form of a white flag. Because white flag mean I surrender. They already lost, right? But the white flag just shows us who is throwing the tile in first, right? It don't matter. Once we find one, it's a wrap. So they got this stage show playing out as the Israeli war because the one that they was playing out in the Ukraine didn't work. We didn't buy that shit. We know that the war in the Ukraine was a direct message about the recovery of Barbados. It's a flag flip. The whole war in the Ukraine was all about um, Barbados reasserting their sovereign rights on the land 
in Austin the Crown. The reason why Russia, because Red Russia, the red flag of Russia, right? Now, the wordplay is a word game. To rush in is Russian. To hurry in haste into something under a red flag. The red flag is the blood flag. That means that anybody come in under the red flag, they only come in for blood. Now, remember, before they put the five-point star on the Moroccan flag, it was red because they were conquistadors, conquesting tutors. If you go to any, any translation, right, conquistador, but do it in English, right? Tutor, T-U-D-O-R, and then space, and write conquest. And then say translate to Spanish, and it's going to come up with a conquistador. And I've done it multiple times. It's the same thing. They've been telling us the whole time without telling us what they're telling us. So the Barbados Recovery Project is being mirrored by the attempts to use to um to thwart the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, which is actually talking about the um temple is set and the red floor is represented of the red flag. The checkerboard floor is called Queensland, that's the chessboard. The red and black checkers that's the fly, the land of flying kings. That's the checkerboard, right? So the ones that was on the checkerboard jumped on the chessboard, got their ass handed to them, fucking with all the queen's men. And all of the queen's be, men are just mama's boys. They just don't want you fucking with their mama and their sisters. That's all. And you can, you can come have fun in Queensland all you want to, right? But that's an Aussie knot. Australia is called the Queensland. <clears throat> Because it's shaped like, um, um, I can't remember Anzinghai tribe, but they had a stool. So a lot of tribes use the stool. It's shaped just like Australia. Australia is on top of the world, not the bottom. Because that's how they got us disoriented, changing the orientation of the poles, north to south. The pole flip is psychological more than it is physical. Before it was physical because we didn't understand the psychology. All we had to do was have them reroute the uh, orbit. The changing of the orbit, which is also the changing of the trajectory, which alters also your time dynamic. So this keeps the crust from flipping. But back in January, the core, you can look this up. I think it was January 6th. The core of the Earth stopped for three days. And then it resumed back in the opposite direction. And they said that the son of man was in the belly of the earth for three days. And then he rose. Rose is a play on words. It means to raise up, but it also means the flower, the rose, the rebirth, born again. All right. The symbol of the rose. And every rose got its thorns. And it's a hand with a fisted glove and the eagle fly with the dove. Right. And if you can't stand the one you with, you better love the one you got, goddammit. So the process that they used on us, being exposed to people so they could see it for themselves, changes the dynamic because it doesn't work. No hypnotized person knows he is hypnotized while he's under hypnosis. Think about that. Nope. This is a Roy Masters, Reverend Roy Masters, master hypnotist telling us this. While you under hypnosis and you acting like a chicken and you clucking around on stage, you are not aware that you under hypnosis clucking around on stage like a fucking chicken because you hypnotized. You have suspended the use of or allowed to be rendered, suspended, the use of the conscious mind. When the conscious mind is not being active, the subconscious mind becomes putty in the hands of what they call the operator, right? Which is really a Dianetics term. The hypnotist is the occidental Western science term. But the hypnotist is the operator. 
The operator is the one who took over the controls. So you being hacked on purpose because you want to be hacked to change your behavior because somebody put a bad program in to begin with. So you have to reprogram yourself. All of this stuff is part of a well-drafted plan of sociology. They were some educated motherfuckers that refused to allow us to get an education and think that they're going to out-educate us by keeping us ignorant and keep giving them education. Then they blocked all of the institutions with the very same people that they had in bondage and servitude as they slaves when they came. And in order for them to be free, in order for us to be free, we have to free the slaves they brought with them when they came, right? We are mad at the pale face. I wouldn't have been too happy with the motherfuckers either. But I don't want to, I don't want to kill the innocent motherfucker. I don't want to be here the innocent motherfucker. I don't want to be here the one who robbed the bank because the dirty motherfucker had his wife and kids at gunpoint at his house and told him he don't come back with the loot that he going to kill his family. I don't want to kill him. He's not the enemy to me. He's under duress. The motherfucker that sent him to rob the bank. That's the motherfucker that I want. I want him. Because he the one doing all of the real dirt. Your satanic Jew. Your Moorish Zionist Jew. Your dirty Jew. Not, I ain't talking about the motherfucking fake Jews. We ain't even talking about them. Because they, they the far guy. They the one supposed to take all of our wrath and vengeance. But we going to have the same motherfucker put us in the condition standing next to us talking about kill Whitey and he the goddamn white man. And that's the part that pisses me off so bad because when I had an enemy I can identify off of looks, that shit was easy. But now I got to realize that the enemy, it ain't how he look, it's how he move. It's his patterns. It's his modus operandi. I used to always wonder, man, why they keep bringing this up to our study forensic profiling? And under forensic profiling, um, 90% of criminals never change their MO. They change their geography. They change their motive. Um, they change certain stuff about their criminal behavior, but the modus operandi, method of operation, the way they do shit, is still going to be the same. And this is how they catch you in profiling. This is how you could have a cold case, 10 years old. People been working on this motherfucker for 10 straight years, bring in a profiler, and he solved that motherfucker in 90 days or less. Because the MO of the criminal don't change. Follow the MO. All right? Once you see the MO, this first thing that you do with you with is in profiling, if you know an MO, it's like, for instance, if a Cali nigga come to Pontiac and do some dirt and I'm listening and they saying how it went down, I know that's a Cali nigga over here. Who got somebody came in from Cali? Oh, well, his people did that shit. You better go talk to him. Right. But now let's say that a Florida nigga come. His M.O. ain't going to be the same as a Cali nigga. He not going to have what you call a cultural influence to the dynamic of his moves. But now. Let's say they both from tribes, just different tribes. When they move, how they move, I know what tribe they from. Because certain tribes got a certain way that they done stuff so long, it's part of genetic makeup now. It's part, part of the DNA. <coughs> Your genetic memory has kicked in, and now you trying to tribe up. Like Big Tookie was trying to tribe up. He trying to wake his clan up. Right? We wasn't expecting him to wake two tribes up, but it's a side effect. If you wake these crypts up, these bloods gonna wake up. If you wake these crypts up, Tuki, these bloods are gonna wake up. Warring tribes. 30 second warning. I'm gonna come in and do some QA. Um, I hope y'all uh was able to digest what I'm telling y'all. But tomorrow I'm be on Young Elder and um we gonna take it, take take y'all, show y'all some stuff about how the slave system worked. And I'm about to come back in if anybody wanna ask questions. 
um, y'all could come in. I'm gonna take.